Yo! What's good, guys? It's your boy J Diggy back with another Air Gear rework video. This time, we are finally going to start going over the anime arts of the series individually. Now, for those of you who have seen the anime, I recommend you check out my last Air Gear rework video, where I specifically talk about all the changes that have been made in the anime arts. For those of you who don't wish to see the anime and just want to subscribe from here, then starting from this video henceforwards will be your best bet. Something I wish to note is that when a character picture is highlighted like like so, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so uh, you guys get the point. It means that that's the person who is talking, okay? I just want to note that, okay? Now then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the introduction to Air Treks arc. Welcome to the world of Air Treks, where the unimaginable seems possible. Extreme riders from all over the world ride ATs, sterilely or mobilized rollerblades that give riders the ability to say, F you, to physics. Extreme riders known as storm riders perform unbelievable tricks where the creativity is limitless. Now we follow the journey of a young man who will eventually become the legendary storm rider. His name is Iki. So this art starts with the introduction of Iki Minami who is bandaged up. He is 17 years old and goes to high school. Iki lives with the foster family. We then get introduced to Mikan, Iki's foster sister who is 22 years old, Rika, Iki's foster mom who is 28 years old, and Ringo who is also Iki's foster sister who is 17 years old. As Ringo gets introduced, she brings up, what are you thinking picking a fight with the group of Storm Warriors? Are you trying to get yourself killed? And Iki responds, I haven't lost yet. After that, he leaves the house and you see him running as he gets to see the area where Iki lives. Now while he's running, we get flashback. At school in Iki's class, we see Tom Tom teaching the kids. But let me ask you this, who ever paid attention in school? And the answer is, nobody! That's right, no one was paying attention in class. Hello class! <laughs> now the entire class was like, ah! As the entire gang surrounds the classroom, Magaki states as some of his gang members start grabbing kids from the class, Now everyone, don't try to run or else you will die. I am the leader of the Skull Sega Storm Rider team, and I will be taking over this entire school as part of my territory. Now I will be taking these people here since their parents did not pay their protection money. The teacher Tom Tom tried to stop them, however Magaki used his ATs to close the distance between the two of them and said, Boo! And Tom Tom responded accordingly, Ah! <laughs> Remember it well that the Skull Sagers rules sunk in low high school. While all that shit was happening, Iki was too scared to do anything. Now some years has passed since the incident, but it's still a flashback. We see Iki along with it, along with Ringo, Kazu, and Onigiri. And as we start to get a bit of lore, Sunken Law High School got worse ever since the Skull Sager showed up. But Iki and the gang can't do anything about it. The situation with the Skull Sagers got a bit better when Mr. Oihara returned from his two year absence. He was able to reduce the number of victims the Skull Sagers kept on taking. But everyone else was too scared to do anything about it, and Mr. Oihara can't stop the Skull Sayers on his own. The Skull Sayers themselves are a Storm Rider team, meaning that they're an underground team. In other words, all Storm Riders are gangsters, and all Storm Rider teams are gangs. That means air tricks are illegal. The police does everything they can to try and stop them, however they are facing infinite crime with finite resources. Whew. Low time is over. Now, a Scarsdale member comes to school and grabs a student saying, You're coming with me. Of course, the student screamed for help. That's when Kazu punched the Scarsdale member in the face. Iki and Iki joined gang and they were about to fight the Scarsdale members. But then Oyahara shows up and yells at the Scarsdale. Get out of this school now! 
What was strange is the fact that the school seekers listened and left the school without pulling up a fight. Anyways, Oiho checked if everyone was okay and then yo, what the hell were you thinking picking a fight with a gang? Do you wanna die? As a result, Oiho gave them all detention. In detention, Iki, Kazu, and Onigiri were mopping up the school floors as they have a conversation. Hey guys, I'm going to go pick a fight with the school shares and get beat their leader. Are you crazy? You're going to die if you do that. When I beat them, I'll become the strongest and will become top dog around here. <laughs> Iki still views himself to be the strongest genius in the world for some reason. But Iki, this is serious. Iki responds saying, don't worry, I'll win. Now, we move a bit forward in time, but it's scaring a flashback where you see in this video clip that Iki does get his ass whooped by the Scorsairs because he doesn't have ATs and he just got destroyed, he just got wrecked. And as he was about to fight them again, he accidentally he pissed his pants because he was scared to die. And the Scorsairs made fun of him for that. And you can probably guess what happened to Iki afterwards. But let me tell you, it wasn't pretty. After the battle, Kazu and Iki came and helped out Iki. End of flashback. We see Iki sitting at the spot where Ringo finds him, calling him for dinner. During that moment, Iki told Ringo to watch. As we see a clip of a girl doing, doing a trick from that railing. For those of you who can't tell, yes, Iki is stalking this woman. Police, arrest this man. Arrest him. Arrest him like crazy. Like this, this, this is kind of crazy, but you get, you get the point. Arrest this guy, gang man. Either way, Iki returns home and he is tied to a chair, like a dog. While he had, while he's there because he has to watch his entire foster family eat barbecue without him. It was his punishment for running out of the house without doing his chores. Rikong and Mikon make it apparent as they eat the meat in front of him, saying stuff like, Mmm, so good. Iki eventually gets pissed and destroys the entire dinner table. Due to ruining in the dinner table, Iki gets beaten up by Rikon and Mikon. After those events, the girls went to take a shower while Iki was heading back to his room. When he saw another closed room with the sign on that says do not enter. Of course, Iki being the prick he always is, he, he goes into the room anyways. Now, as you see in this video clip, he discovers that his boss of family are Stormwriters as well, who also write ATs, and they never told him about it. Thinking back to the battle against the Skullsakers, he thinks that he could even the playing field with wearing ATs. He also, later in the clip, discovers an emblem, and its name is Sleeping Force. Now, as of this moment, Iki also realized something really important. Holy shit, I've been living with gangsters my entire life! Either way, he takes a pair of ATs, an instruction manual, and the Sleeping Force emblem with them outside. Of course, his foster family found out about this, so I'm pissed he stole their AT. As Iki fools around and gets used to the ATs a bit, he reaches the same place where that girl he stalked did that trip. Now watch this clip here. Birds can spread their wings and fly to the heavens, but you're stuck here on the ground. Why is that? As Iki does that jump, that swallow that he saw is supposed to signalize that pink hair girl he was stalking earlier. She was there the entire time and saw that jump. And all she did was just smile. Of course, since she's still a beginner, he goes around rooftop to rooftop, giving him property damage everywhere he goes and somehow doesn't get in trouble for it. Eventually, he crashes down near an area in front of the train cart called the Glum Slum. As Iki gets up, we get introduced to a woman named Glum. Honestly, I don't know what her real name is. I think it's Jabba maybe, but I'll just call her Glum. Glum realizes that Iki is a bookie, and of course, due to her appearance, Iki was scared for his life. Don't judge a book by its cover. At a closer look, Glum grabs Iki's shirt and sees the Sleeping Force emblem on his shirt. Glum apologizes because she had no idea that Iki was a new recruit of Sleeping Force. 
Obviously, Iki isn't a recruit because he stole it and Iki has no idea what she's talking about. Either way, Blum explains to Iki that there's a big storm while of me. She calls on an old man named Koro to guide Iki to the meeting. Koro says some cool shit such as... From Sleeping Forest. I wonder how he managed that one. Try to keep up. Hey, slow down, old man. Who you call an old man? I said what? With that, it should give you some context of how Cole speaks. The only reason I play is because I thought the voice actor who ever played Cole was. That was kind of cool. I kind of enjoyed that. Iki makes it to the Stormwater meeting. Iki sees the pink haired girl he was stalking before and finds out her name is Senka. Senka was holding a billboard, not the normal size billboard you see when you're driving, but a billboard that you can hold, where there are different emblems plastered all over the billboard. Iki thought it would be a great way to introduce himself to Senka. He rolled up to Senka holding the Sleeping Forest emblem, asking if he could put it on. Senka responds, of course, but you gotta catch me first. As Iki tried to catch her, he eventually was able to put the emblem on the billboard. But what he didn't know is that he put the Sleeping Forest emblem on top of the Skull Singers emblem. You guys saw that? This dude just issued a challenge to the Skull Singers. Of course, Iki had no idea what the hell was going on. But then at that moment, Magaki, the leader of the Skull Singers, showed up. Now I quote. Well, 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 if it ain't the piss boy. You think you're a storm marker now? <laughs> I guess one ass being wasn't enough for you. Hey, maybe you should say it was a misunderstanding. You're a rookie from the looks of things. Oh, hell no. And as you see in the video clip, you can see that all the storm markers got surrounded by cops. The guy that at the top is holding the badge, his name is Kaito, and he's a chief of police. He is important later, just as what he's introduced. It's his job to hunt down all storm riders at YATs. Of course, six cops survived, everyone broken. Don't think because of the cops you're getting off the hook. I finally have a chance to get that legendary emblem. I'm not going to waste it here. We will get through those train tracks and we'll head to the Glum Slums location. The first one to touch the sign wings. Aikens like, bring it on, bogey! To be continued, no! Hey guys, I'm go- <laughs> Oh. Ringo was also Iki's foster sister who's 17 years old. And Rika, Iki's fa- Oh my god, I- 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 Oh my god. <laughs> okay. But I'm just gonna call her slump. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna call her slump. I'm just gonna call her slum dog Billy again. <laughs>